Are you finding clarity in your life in retirement years? It can sometimes be a very difficult uh, exercise because we've spent so many years doing things for other people. Now our identity is shifting. And so finding uh, clarity in our lives is, is an opportunity. So I want to share with you four exercises that you can do, practical things that you can do to find clarity in your life as you move into retirement years. My name is Margaret Manning. I'm with 60 and Me, and I want to thank you so much for being here. Welcome and uh, happy that you could join us today. Now, our show today is brought to you by International Living. International Living is a company that is helping people who want to retire in another country around the world. So if you've got questions about potentially moving abroad, they've got people who are experiencing it real time, and they give you advice on all kinds of things that you may have questions about. So check out their website, internationalliving.com, you can um, slash 60 and me, and you can ask them to send you their latest uh, report. Um, there's no obligation. You just give them your email address and uh, you can get informed. So let's talk about uh, finding clarity in your in your 60s. Now, you may actually moving abroad might be one of the things you're trying to find clarity about, but it's all about, um, you know, looking at retirement advice, and it's usually and very justifiably about financial planning, you know, how to prepare financially for retirement, because retirement, of course, is that point where you stop working in a full-time job. But there's another element to retirement, which is where you retire from an older person, and not older in years, but in, you know, in perspective. You've been doing things for other people for many, many years, and you want to uh, now start clarifying what it is you want to do for yourself. <laughs> what is it that you want to do? So that's important that you that you, you know, create some kind of a vision. Now, um, Sin Meyer, Cynthia Meyer wrote an article that I'm building on here because she's four really great ideas. And I'm going to try to make these practical for you so you can you know, read the article and just from, draw, draw from them ways to get answers to the questions. So the first thing she suggests that you do, the first exercise is to create a vision board. What is a vision board? Well, <clears throat> it's an extra, it's a, it's a expression of, uh, in pictures and it can be in sound as well, but pictures of, of what you want for your future. Now, a lot of people do this with um, creating a collage and just the best way to do it is just to go to um, a magazine or books and just, or, you know, where you can take out the pictures and put them in a, in an order. Like if you just, it just draws you to it. Like you just think that, that really attracts me. That that's aligned to me. Pull it and put it on a on a on a vision board on a on a on a, um, a collage. Another option, though, is to simply circle a list. And, and now Cynthia gives you a whole list of things. If you don't want to draw or put the board together, you can just look at this huge list of things, kind of questions, and circle the top five. And that from that you will see what you know what your priorities are for living in you know, in retirement and these are sort of just themes or uh, topics that if you if it really pulls you to it then this is something that's a priority for you and the list she gives in the um, uh, article is quite comprehensive so choosing five from this list is kind of hard but it's things that really fit your retirement vision so for example do you want to start a new business do you want to develop a hobby is volunteering important to you? Is spending time with family? Is spending time with grandchildren? Traveling? Is mentoring others something that you want to do? Do you want to relax? Do you want to travel to another country? Do you want to protect, perhaps live in another country? Do you want to do some consulting? Do you want to just play? <laughs> do you want to do more exercise? Do you want to get physically stronger? And do you want to enhance your well-being and nutrition? I mean, there's a whole list here. Uh, do you want to spend time with your husband or partner? Do you want to find a new relationship? What are the five things that really speak to you from that list? And then circle them. And then ask. Then you can ask yourself, well, how do I pri prioritize those five? What are the five most important things? And that's really what the vision board does. It actually helps you to pull out a picture that says, you know, like a picture of a couple or a picture of children. And then you can say, ah, oh, that's what drew me to it was being with my grandchildren or starting a new business. Then with those five, you can actually then start to see where they are in your life, how you're actually implementing them, what you're doing to achieve them. And if you're not doing the things that are going to help you get there, then there's a disconnect. So that disconnect is where you have to work. The second uh, exercise that you can do, according to Sin, and I, I love this one, was to actually identify your energy, energy path. 
So what are, there's a whole list of things, again, in the article that are, are area, areas that pull your energy towards them, that require you to give it your time and energy. So, for example, is community. Now, the, the way to do this is to actually like put one to five. So one is like completely deletes you, uh, depletes you, like you don't want to do that at all. That's just not priority. And number five would be, or the number five would be, I absolutely am energized by this. It's what I want to do. It's my passion. It's my purpose. So one is low, five is high. And, um, you know, so just look at this list of things and say, yeah, which ones of these are really energetic to me? I really want to do them. Which ones are like, mm, not so much. So the first thing is community. How important is your social life, your relationships? How much energy are you prepared to put into that? And there's a big gap, actually. It's a very interesting point because there's a big gap sometimes between what you think you want to do and the energy that you're prepared to give it. If you want to meet people, you want to make a new relationship, you've got to get out. You've got to actually get up off your seat and go and, um, and do it. Second thing is growth. How important is lifelong learning to you? How important is overcoming challenges, uh, setting goals? How much does that energize you? Giving back. How much does the idea of leaving a legacy or finding a purpose that is like the reason that you get up every day, how much does that give you energy and motivation? Another thing is health. How important is your diet, exercise? And again, there you go. If you know you've got to get healthy, you're going to have to get to the to the gym or you got to do something with like um, yoga. I mean, I just want to mention, by the way, that's a really good point. This is easy for you. I'm making this easy. <laughs> we've got three yoga videos at 60 and me. We've got gentle yoga. Uh, chair yoga and yoga flows and these are free of charge they're actually you can re watch them online no charge if you want to buy the dvd so you can do them at home you can you can buy the, the dvds but you can watch uh, it on on the uh, on your computer or tv it's really really cool uh, so that's something you can do to exercise if health and uh, and uh, you know energy and, and nutrition is important to you Start something like yoga, Pilates, something that's going to energize. Another thing is how important is your finance? Are your finances? How much energy do you want to give that? So those are some of the things that, you know, she asked a second exercise to actually prioritize by looking at it from an energy perspective. And then another thing you can do is um, define your core values. Now, this is a little teeny bit more tricky because values are, are, are like diff difficult, like compassion kindness, uh, honesty, uh, you know, uh, willingness to learn, willingness to forget. All these things are values, but how are you going to choose like just a few from that? But I think that the way she presents it for this, this third exercise is, what are the three core values that you want to pass on to your grandchildren? Or the children in your life, your, as your aunt or, um, you know, your, your nep nieces and nephews. What are the three core values kindness, generosity, whatever, um, you know, intelligence. I mean, what are the, what are the values that you, that you want to give or practical things? What are the three core values that you think that you want people to think about when they think of you? So is that like, do they want to think that you were a generous person or a compassionate person or what, you know, what are those core values? Uh, honest person, hardworking, dedicated, uh, persistent, resilient, um, and what are the three things that you value the most? I think it's such a cool exercise because ask a friend to do it and then do it, but don't, don't look at their answers until you put down your own three and see if they're the same. Because if you're not projecting to others, um, you know, what you want to, what you is important to you, then it's, there's a, again, it's a disconnect. And another thing is, uh, the fourth, the fourth exercise is answering clarity finding questions. Ask yourself questions that have a richness in the response. So for example, ask yourself, what are your regrets? If you have any, what are your regrets? That's a very deep question. What are your accomplishments? What are you proud of? What have you done in your life that were your accomplishments? What are you good at? Yeah, what do you do really well? And what do you not do so well? What did you learn from your failures and mistakes? So. You can complete it on Cynthia's website and check the article. She's got a thing called Retirement Lifestyle Assessment. And this helps you to um, implement these four exercises. And I think they're super helpful. I really uh, love, I love things that are practical. I love things that are really down to earth. And they will help you find how to have an energetic and healthy and positive lifestyle as you retire. 
So which one of these four exercises did you find inspiring or helpful? And uh, have you got any, maybe another approach that you take that, that is useful? Which of these, ex these exercises resonated with you? Leave your comments in the section below. Let's have a conversation about this. I think it's a really cool com um, um, way to look at retirement uh, planning. <laughs> uh, it's not, not good to do so much with money, but more with, um, with you. So thanks again for being here. Check out our website, everybody. And also we've got lots of articles on um, YouTube about this topic of, of preparing for retirement. But our our website, of course, 60andme.com, we have Facebook, uh, we have our Patreon and Facebook supporters groups, if that's something that you want to do. Um, they are such fun groups. Uh, they're smaller, they're private. Uh, we are now gathering about a thousand women now who we can have conversations with. It's very, very cool. So check out those if you, if you have a moment. But anyway, know that I care about you and I really am happy that you're here with us today. Uh, thank you again for your support and leave your comments below about what, uh, what exercises are you going to do to help get clarity in retirement. Bye-bye for now, everybody.